And we are recording. So um, my name is Rob Tornstrom. I'm a pastor here at a church in South Salem in Oregon. And I am um, here with Chris, who is, um, well, it's kind of a strange story. My, my wife and him were part of a biking club, and she and him got to talking and kind of decided that it would be fun for us, the two of us, to sit down and chat. And because um, we both have questions and, and enjoy talking about important things about life and faith and um, spirituality and how do we know what we know and, and how can we know and what evidence is there for that. And so um, a couple of weeks ago we had lunch and I thought the conversation was interesting and enjoyable enough that uh, maybe others would want to listen in. So we set this up and um, so I'm going to let Chris introduce himself and then um, we'll get into some of the things that we want to talk about today. So Chris, please. Um, introduce yourself. Rob, thank you for having me. My name is uh, Chris Cox. I uh, live here in Salem. Um, I am pronounced as an atheist, but more that is an atheist. You just know one thing that I don't believe in a God. I don't know there's no God, um, but I'm a secular humanist and um, I'm a skeptic. And so that leads me to the path that I'm on is how do we know what is true? How do we know which religion is true, if any? And so that's kind of where, you know, kind of where I'm at. And so I think through these conversations, people listening, you know, will hopefully find, you know, what, what is good evidence? What leads somebody to believe what they believe? Yeah, that's great. Um, thanks, Chris. So one of the things that, as we talked a couple of weeks ago, we, we started with a huge amount of, and our conversation went in lots of different directions. And I, I think what we kind of decided to focus on today was just that relationship between, um, between evidence. How do you, how, how do you know that something is true? What, what standard of evidence do we, do we use for what's true and what's right? So in other words, yeah. Christians have Christians, you know, claim faith in a God and in the Bible and so on. Um, how how do we know that that's a reasonable thing? And Chris, I guess maybe why don't you start and just kind of lay out what 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 standard of evidence you think there should be, and why Christianity maybe doesn't meet that standard, or other religions as well don't meet that standard. <clears throat> uh, so that that is a good question: is what evidence um, you know is needed to believe in a religion? You know, we're gonna I'm gonna basically talk about the three: uh, Christianity. Um, Islam and um, Hinduism. All three believe in a God, right? All three have a books or books that they believe to be true. And they all use to me faith. You know, people might say I use faith and reason to come to the truth. But how, how do they come about it? You know, the Christian will say the Hindu is wrong. The Hindu will say the Muslim is wrong. The Muslim will say the Christian is wrong. How do we come across that? Mm -hmm. And that is my thing, is that evidence. Um, you know, what, what is good evidence? Do we look in the Bible and say that is evidence, testimony or anecdotal evidence? You know, the problem is we can't, we can't investigate it. We can't determine, mm -hmm. is it really true? Did those things really happen? So in my mindset is um, we need to be able to uh, investigate, determine, is, is what's most likely, um, what is good evidence? Here's the thing, until it's proven with really good sound reasoning and evidence, it's not true. And that's the thing, is that people, um, people how did people get to the God? I mean, I understand that people will say, well, we couldn't have got here, the Big Bang doesn't, how, how could you, you know, a mess, you blow a bomb. How does a bomb create something powerful? Or how did we come from um, the same ancestor chimpanzees? I just don't believe that. How did we come from a single cell organism? And so people have these really, really, really tough questions. And these are very tough questions that scientists are trying to um, show, but people don't. And so what they do is they insert God. And that's my concern is that when you don't know something, how do you get to insert God? Right. 
So right. So so another, and I think you're raising an important point, right? You can't you, you can't just use God to fill in the gaps wherever you don't know something, right? That that makes sense, and I, I think I get that. And that's what people do. I mean, people don't understand things, and so they insert God. And I think we've done that as a species. If you look a yep. um, hundred thousand years ago, we didn't know. We didn't have science as we knew now. They didn't know when somebody died, what happened. So right. I believe that religion really was created to answer these questions as we had as primitive men. And think about it. Um, today in America, mainly Christianity is the norm. But Rob, what if you were born in India? You would be a Hindu. You would believe in the Hindu gods. So why does a Christian get to say the Hindu is wrong when you could have been born a Hindu? Right. Yeah. So that's my concern. And it's not necessarily main, you know, God exists, God doesn't exist. I mean, we can argue that. Um, I believe the lack of evidence and the lack of him being around to me shows that you can't really disprove him, but you can't really prove him. So, um, so let, me, let me ask you, just at, at that point, Chris, let me, let me come in and ask a question. What, what is the standard, in, you, in your mind, what is the standard of evidence that would be needed to prove that there is a God. So what evidence would convince me is different what would convince you, Rob, or convince the listener. That's the problem. Each person has a different standard of evidence that, re that um, convinces them. So mm -hmm. some people are convinced just by reading the Bible, feeling the Spirit, mm -hmm. oh, Jesus, yes, it, it has to be true. For me, what would convince me of a God? I can't, only a God would be able to answer that. That's the problem, is that I can't tell you what evidence would convince me. Now, the evidence we have doesn't convince me. So why not? So, so let's first talk about some of that evidence that we have. Um, you know, historically, you could point out, say, Christians would say, okay, we have the Bible. You could look at the evidence from design, right, creation, um, the, the, the complexity of creation, and so on. There are philosophical arguments, um, ontological arguments, and so on, right? So we have this, this body of evidence. Um, why does that not meet your standard? Um, those don't meet my standard because, again, the Bible, we don't know if it's the Word of God. We have no evidence on that. There's things in the Bible that you look at the Old Testament and the New Testament, and it portrays a different type of God. Um, the Old Testament portrays a God that is in rules and, you know, punishes you extremely if you don't follow the rules. And then you have a New Testament God that came to earth, died so you could go to heaven. But the thing is that, so you just need to believe in him. You have to believe in Jesus. Well, what about the Hindu who doesn't believe in Jesus? Right. He's a good person. What about the atheist? Or the person who lives a good life. Why does it have to be believed? My concern in Christianity is the way that they say to get to heaven is to believe, not to be a good person, not to anything, but you have to believe. That is my main concern. And I know that we can get into other things of why I believe the Bible is man-made and not God-inspired and the issues that are within the Bible. And that's the thing is that when you study, um, a lot of people, I ask so many, they said, you know the Gospels weren't written by Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Oh, no, no, they were. No, they weren't. They were not eyewitness accounts. That's why I think most people, when they are into the religions, whatever the religion is, they don't really understand. They just take what's being told to them, and they don't really study of, okay, is this good evidence? Now, if you talk about design, well, how do you know it was designed? If you look at this planet, how do you know? How do you know we didn't come by just natural cause, natural selection? Like, Rob, do you believe in evolution? Um, depends on what you mean by evolution. Question for you. Right? Yeah. So, so if, if evolution, by evolution natural you mean... <clears throat> Sorry, go ahead. Uh, evolution by natural selection. I believe that, I do believe that there's plenty of scientific evidence that suggests that species change over time and adapt based on their environment, right? So in other words, I don't believe that it's necessary for a Christian to believe 
in in a literal six day creation period of time and no change of species. So I, I do believe that the Christian worldview makes room for um, a, uh, you know, a, a universe that is millions or billions of years old and has changed enormously over time. Okay, so now, when it comes to do I believe that we came from nothing? Well, no, then there's where the Christian worldview would take a different point of view and say, well, there, there is a, even to use non-religious language, there's a, there's a first cause that is outside of, of the universe, right? Now, yeah. again, do, do, is there variation on that within Christianity? Of course there is. There'll be lots of people who say, well, no, in order, you know, I'm a literal six day creationist and yeah. um, and they'll present their evidence for that now for me personally i am a i i do i believe that the universe is is you know millions of years old personally but again you'll find variation on that um because see see and there's there's i think an important thing because i think christianity is not is not a religion that is opposed to uh reason and science and and those kinds of evidence right in other words we can find a way for those two things to fit together. In fact, it's necessary that the claims of Christianity can be supported reasonably. So we don't just say that Christianity is is a religion of faith and uh, you know science or or you know other areas of life are by reason. There's 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 going to, these two things are going to fit together. Okay, yeah. so yeah. I'll give you a chance to respond to that. But when you believe in something and say, I believe in this, let me find things that help me connect with that. That's different than the outsider's test. And the outsider's test is looking at something and saying, okay, looking at this objectively, would this convince me? As an outsider, would um, somebody walking on water convince me that they, it's supernatural? We, and today, you can go to Las Vegas and you can see Chris Angel fly. Does that mean he has supernatural powers? So that's the thing is we know of magic and we know it's not real. So that's the thing. I've never had the supernatural um, basically shown to me or shown evidence of it. Now, um, let me uh, take back on the existence. The universe actually is um, over a billion. I know you said million. So I want to do a correction. So, you know, just in case yeah. a listener, but the earth with three. And I can see that point, by the way. Yeah. Here's the thing then where did God, then why did God need to, and if God started this, and I can see to you that a God, but we know nothing of this God. We don't know if he still exists. We don't know if he's still alive. Maybe it was somebody at their last ditch effort of death. They started this universe. We, we don't know. I mean, so yes, we could say, okay, there is a God who created the universe. What we can think of, but we don't know of him today. We we have no evidence, and that's the thing. If you look at the proposition, does God exist? You have to have the evidence that ties them together. Mm -hmm. Does God exist? Um, I'm going to use an example real quick. I'm going to make it shorter. That um, Matt Daly Hunte from the Atheist Experience uh, mm -hmm. in Austin, Texas, said, "You have a proposition of Matt killed Steve. Just because Matt exists and Steve exists, Matt could uh, shoot a gun." Uh, Matt had a gun doesn't mean those are evidence for it. So you need to basically show God exists and you have to tie them together. And I feel like what people do is they have other evidence that on its own doesn't fit the proposition. Does God exist? Mm -hmm. That's the problem. Good. You need those so things together. And we're throwing things like, Oh, look at the universe. Look at this. Well, again, great. If you show this, but then you still haven't shown that the Christian God is the only God and the Muslims and the Hindus have no, nothing. And, and, and I think, <clears throat> I think that's a really, really important point because I would actually, there, there's a, there's an extent there to which I think you and I would agree, which is, okay, the evidence for the universe, I mean, design, um, origins, complexity of, of creation and so on does not establish the Christian God. Right. And I, no. I want to make that clear because I think you're right about that. I, I would I would push that point pretty hard. It 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 does establish it or at least it, it points to. And I want to be careful in my language here because I would I would argue that it points to something greater than 
what we can see and experience in, um, in, 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 in our world. In other words, it points to something supernatural. Now, we haven't made the logical step from there then to there is the Christian God of the Bible. What we've done is said, okay, we, we, we have a world that we, no one can prove where it came from, right? We can't prove we have theories and we have um, ideas and so on, but we can't prove that there was, um, you know, a, 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 an explosion at the beginning of time that, that um, you know, then moves rapidly outward and leads to, uh, over billions of years, leads to where we are now. But we can say, okay, there's, there's some, some kind of origin here. There's a complexity. There's a design. So that, you know, the Christian would take that and say, okay, that points to something greater. Now, then the next step is to go, okay, what, what is it that makes, uh, what is it that makes sense? And, and there's where, you know, we, we get into a topic that's bigger than today, which is why, how do we make that next step from, okay, there is something bigger than ourselves to, does it make sense to believe in the Christian God as opposed to other religions? And that's obviously a massive topic. Um, yeah. But I would, I would just, I would just make your point and I think agree with you to a, to an extent, which says um, there's evidence here, but it doesn't necessarily point to the Christian God of the Bible. It points to something supernatural and something outside of our own experience. <clears throat> and I still disagree with that. I still think that this universe could have been created naturally. That's the thing is you have not ruled out natural just creation of this universe. That's but doesn't that require, does, that, that's right, but doesn't that assumption itself require a measure of faith? In other words, for a sport, you don't think so? Okay, so prove it then. I don't, I don't think it requires faith. Here's the thing. I don't know how the universe was what started. Who started it? I don't I can say I don't know, but until it is actually proven that a God did it, I can say I don't know. That's not a faith claim that I'm taking. I just say I don't know how it started, and and then I'm willing to wait until I have the evidence to show me how it got started. See that I think that's where we're different, Rob, is that yeah. I don't know. You think that's a faith claim, but that's not. That is just I'm waiting for evidence. Whether we may not get in our lifetime. That's the thing. We may not know, but I'm just not okay inserting it has to be supernatural because I've never seen supernatural. So to me, until the supernatural is um, proven, I can't use that as an, as an example. Are there, are, there any, are, are there any things <clears throat> that you can think of that cannot, any experiences that cannot be proven? Any other experience, experiences or things like, for example, we can't prove dragons or unicorns. Do you believe that they are real? Um, well, that's an interesting question, right? Is so. So, uh, I, I think to to make the point, no. Um, but but I'm thinking more okay. experiences. So, can you prove that somebody loves you? I well, okay. That that's. You know, that's dealing with emotions and feelings and things like that. That's a little bit different than who created the universe or supernatural. I don't think love is supernatural. It is to a point, I mean, but, but how, do you, how, how do you prove that love is not just... Um, sorry, I'll, I'll let you finish and then I'll, I'll, I'll reply. Go ahead. I, 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 know, I see where you're trying to go with well, you have to have faith on love or you have to have faith. But no, there's evidence that can show you if somebody loves you or somebody doesn't love you. Um, you, you, you know somebody, you have a personal experience, you, you get to know the person. That's the difference is you look at that and you don't have that experience with God. You don't have that, um, you know, how does God communicate with you? In well, the Bible, some, but, it says but, that God communicates you in a small Right. But some would say, so, so, so a couple of things on that, right? Um, first of all, you, you, so you have this experience, but how do you know that that experience is not um, manipulation, for example, or someone, you know, working towards self-centered goals, right? They treat you like they love you, but deep down, they're really, you know, they're a gold digger or something like that. Um, but the, And the other side of it is, okay, there are some people that would say, well, actually, I have had this experience with God that was 
um, you know, it, it was it was very meaningful. It, it you know, so it, it then it does come into the subjective. Now, I'm not necessarily going to make the case that that proves God, but I'm just saying that I think the parallels there are maybe. I guess I'd say they're more pronounced than, than we might be led to believe right at the beginning. But how do they know those feelings is a God and not just their own uh, subconscious with them of feelings? I mean, the mind is such a complex. It is. Complex organ that how do we know that the feelings is really God and not just them convincing themselves. I mean, or, the, the human humanity really convince themselves of just about anything. That's the thing. But but then can't, so, that be said of, can't that be said of love, right? You say, well, we have these experiences of love, but, but again, how do we know that that's not just a subjective um, you know, experience? They're just convincing themselves, right? Because lots of people you know, want to believe that someone else loves them, but really it's just in their mind, right? Well, he looked at me the right way, and so he must love me. And so how, how do we know? Can, can you be tricked? And uh, can, can somebody pretend that they love you, but they don't? I mean, yes. I mean, that's the thing. Yes, it, you can be tricked. I, you know, I can uh, succeed that, that, you know, you are, but, you, you know, you love them. They don't love you. Um, but I still don't think how that ties to the main thing does God exist? Um, well, here, not... right. In in a way, it, in a way, it, I'm not I'm 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 not trying to use that to to prove that God exists. What I'm trying to do is is just raise the question of are 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 there any claims that we make that even a, a someone from your worldview um, that are still made on the basis of some degree of faith. And, and I'm, I'm pushing the point that says, okay, you know, something common like love, you know, you believe that someone loves you, whether it be a child, a parent, a spouse, um, you know that, and yet you, you may not have the same standard of evidence that you're using to, 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 to get, to, to argue in favor of God. You see what I'm saying? So in other words, you know, and you believe that people love you, but, but, you do that on a that that itself is a faith claim at some level right now you have evidence and you can point to things but on some level you have to say i believe that this person really loves me and that they're not a gold digger they're not trying to use me for their self-serving purposes and so on so you're making a faith claim at the end of the day uh but that faith claim is built on some measure of evidence and what i'm That's saying right. is christianity does kind of the same thing on a much bigger scale we say okay there's, there's evidence not to prove God, because I don't think we can prove God, but, but we gather the evidence and we say at the end of the day, we have to have some measure of faith that says, okay, looking at the overall evidence, it tilts in favor of, of there being, well, I'll, I'll just start by saying that tilts in favor of there being a, a God figure being, supernatural being, okay? Now, from there, we go into how do we know which is the real God? So that, that's, that's the point I'm trying to make, that, it's, that, that, that we all make faith claims that are built on some evidence, but, but then at the end of the day have to come to some faith. See, then um, my issue on that is how do you know tilted? I feel like that is a, a subjective um, <clears throat> result that you say it's tilting to God. How do you know it's tilting to God? Again, yep. how do you know that the world wasn't naturally created? You're tilting it right. that way because of that is your worldview. And that's the thing is most people who listen to them, um, you know, might say, I, I believe, you know, that God did it and they have reasons and they have feelings and they have different things. Uh, somebody who doesn't believe might say, no, I need evidence. And so that's where we're kind of on polar opposites of, that, you know, right. yeah. of, of the issue. And that thing, the thing on love is we see that we know that love exists. We know that love is real. How, I though? don't know if the supernatural, how do you know that love? How do you know right. love is real? Right. Okay. Well, I guess love could be made up. It could be imaginary, but. Or it could be just chemical feel, reactions in the brain, right? How do you, how do you know that your love is not your neurons firing and your hormones going and all that other stuff? And, and okay, well, then we can reduce it down to a biological and neurochemical function. Well, I mean, we could, I mean, I guess that is possible in a scientific, you know, I don't know much about that. So, but the thing is, is that the thing is that you're comparing something like this, that's, um, that can be studied versus, can I study the supernatural? 
can you study the supernatural? Can you show me the supernatural? You can't. So you can't. I, I understand right. you're showing something faith, and you're trying to tie it to something else. But it's not just faith in God. It's I've never seen the supernatural demonstrated. And you have three major religions. And here's another thing. You have a God of the Bible who came to earth and died for your sins and, and said, you need to repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Um, Acts 2.38, right? Mm -hmm. um, so what does he do? He has people write down stuff in a book that takes a couple hundred years. He has people go out. I mean, if you're a God of, um, of enormous powers, and everybody needs to be saved or believe in him to be saved. Is that really the best way to spread your message? 2,000 years forward, not everybody has heard his message. Not everybody has been convinced of his message. You're a God, and that's your way of delivering your salvation is by a book that had to be translated in many different languages, that had to be carried for probably many, many uh, centuries. Really? You're telling well, me that God, that's, that's, your, that's the God? Like, uh, now, some, some, so, might, some, some might make the point that Christianity has actually spread more effectively than any other world religion in world history. Um, but that's a, that's a, that's a, um, a di discussion we will have to save because we are just out of time. Um, and I, I want to, I want to make one closing yeah, kind yeah. of thought and then um, I want to let you do the same thing, um, <laughs> which is, I, I think you hit on something important is, is when I mentioned the idea of it tilting towards there being a God and you said, well, that's subjective. And I think I want to, I want to not, not concede that. I, I think I want to um, agree with that in the sense that there's, there's an extent in which that is a, that is, that is the process of an individual weighing out the claims and deciding mm -hmm. um, more likely than not. Right now, you and I look at the evidence and we each make we each weigh the claims and we each come to a conclusion. And and I think and that's that that exemplifies, yes. I think, at the end of the day, what really what faith is. It's at least from the Christian worldview. It's not at least it ought not to be just sort of blind acceptance of whatever without weighing any evidence or reason or logic. Right. Faith should be built on logic historically christianity teaches that you know god gave us minds to think with and reason and logic and those are ways in which we can evaluate the evidence so so christianity should not be seen as a religion that is built on irrationality but it it, it so it should be logically consistent and it should you know there should be evidence that we should be able to weigh and then you're right at the end that's where faith comes in is okay we can't see and prove everything but we tilt we, again, we start with tilting towards, well, there must be some kind of God. Now, I think, I think what you're saying is you look at the evidence and you, you determine, well, there's not enough to make a conclusion. There's not enough to come to any sort of um, reasonable conclusion that there is a God or the, you know, a, a God that's worth committing to. I, I, think I'm, I hope I'm summarizing you, you fairly there, but I think that's what yeah. I hear you say. Yeah, in a little bit. And then my issue is, um, you know, using the Christian God of the Bible is um, people, I think, just need to understand that, like their God, um, my, my issue is this God who, again, back in three, four thousand years ago, most of the God slavery were okay with a death side. I mean, or things and here's the thing if you look at it um on a scientific level people who believe the adam and eve story genetically would come from two people and it only and well we lost chris there we go you're back uh okay uh, I'm not sure if they heard me, but as far as we came from Adam and Eve and from uh, Noah and his family, really genetically, if you're down to that many in a species, you're not going to exist. Genetics, science proves that these stories 
are not real unless somehow you can show me where we have a species of eight of something, um, four of them are um, related, how did we genetically populate the earth? Well, hey. again, you have to insert God. You have to insert God. Well, God must have given them super DNA. God must have, you know, you have to insert God for this to be, and that's the problem is I feel like Christians, yes, okay, so you, you know, you have some of this, like how did the universe create the, you know, first cause, you know? But the thing is, is that then you start looking at the Bible and it's filled with issues that if you really, really studied, you would find or have problems. They really do. Yep. And so, Chris, and, and I, I think that's actually a really, uh, that's a whole issue that deserves a good conversation all on its own because you're raising really important and really thoughtful questions that um that i you know we'll have to do this again and, and uh dig into some of those um we're gonna um we're gonna wrap up and i want to chris i really i want to thank you i i really enjoy our conversations you ask very thought-provoking questions and um and at the end of the day you, you make me think a little bit more about my own beliefs and worldview and i hope that you know together we do the same thing to each other so i i want to thank you um uh, subscribe. We're going to have some more videos coming up here on the channel. And if you have questions that you'd like to discuss or uh, be on a video, then leave a note in the comments and we'll set up a video that, um, you know, a video conversation will do something like this. So again, Chris, thank you so much. This was really enjoyable and I uh, yeah, appreciate you taking the time today. Thank you very much.